Hi, I'm Lori Grunin, Senior Editor for CNET, and this is the Nikon Coolpix P7000. Nikon allowed two years to lapse between the P6000 and its successor, the P7000. But to Nikon's credit, the P7000 is a complete reworking of the P6000 rather than just an update. The most notable step forward is a welcome return to a lower resolution sensor. Consumers tend to eat up those marketing-driven resolution boosts, but hobbyists always push back. And in this case, Nikon gave the P7000 the same 10 megapixels as the rest of its class. Other changes include a new sloping top design with a completely new control layout. It's eerily similar to the Canon G-Series, though. It's got a longer zoom lens, a larger LCD, and HD movie capture, complete with mic input. The camera also has a built-in neutral density filter, something I'm a really big fan of. As with the P6000, the P7000 uses a new standard OS-compatible NRW RAW file rather than its proprietary NEF format. And the camera has some basic RAW processing to create secondary JPEGs. It also ups the exposure bracketing to five shots and adds white balance and, more interestingly, ISO sensitivity bracketing. Slightly bigger and heavier than the G12, it has the same fundamental design, albeit with the longer lens. It has a comfortable rubberized grip and a thumb rest that allow you to shoot one-handed. The top mode dial offers the usual manual, semi-manual, and automatic shooting modes, as well as three user setting modes. I especially like the way you configure them completely through the menus. There's also a programmable function button on the front next to the lens, to which you can assign direct access to a variety of settings. In conjunction with the zoom memory setting, which allows you to preset stops at a variety of focal lengths, you can create a custom stepped zoom range. I have to admit, though, I always forget the button is there. It's a bit too unobtrusive and awkward to reach. Another novel design, the quick menu dial, allows you to select among various shooting settings and a six-slot customizable My Menu. The button in the middle lets you change the settings for the selected option. I like the concept as well as the execution. However, when the flash is raised, that button is the only place to grip with your left hand if you hold the camera like a point-and-shoot rather than a DSLR. And speaking of the flash, the P7000s allow you to quickly dial in flash compensation in fractions of power, a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, etc., rather than in stops. I also like the operation of the P7000's back selector dial better than the G12's. It's far less prone to accidental selections. And the location of the adjustment dial is nicer here than on the G12 because it falls close enough to your thumb that it feels natural to operate. Though shaped differently than the G12s, Nikon has a round viewfinder as opposed to a rectangular one, it's about the same size and same quality. It's especially useful on this camera, though, since the display doesn't tilt or swivel, so you can't get better visibility on it in direct sunlight. If you're a time-lapse fan, something that Nikon has a lot of, you actually lose some capabilities relative to the P6000. For instance, while you used to be able to shoot up to 1800 frames, now it's capped at 300 minutes, such as 300 frames at 1 minute intervals or 30 frames at a 10 minute interval. Typical for its class, the P7000's JPEG noise profile looks okay at ISO 200 and below. But at ISO 400 you start to see color noise creep in, and by ISO 800 details simply look mushy. Like a lot of its competitors, this camera tends to produce some somewhat crunchy looking details in places that aren't around the main focus area, especially at wide apertures. I also found the automatic white balance exceptionally cool. And finally, it does seem to clip highlights a little more frequently than comparable cameras. The lens can be very sharp and it displays surprisingly little fringing in general. This model also updates its movie capture options. It now supports 720p and the quality is just okay. It's got some smeary edge detail, but decent exposures and not a lot of moiré, so it's fine for the occasional clip. It can also zoom during capture, and the lens is quieter than I expected. For the most part, the P7000 shooting performance matches that of the G12, but neither can keep up with the LX5. And it feels noticeably sluggish shooting raw. For the most part, I think shooters in this class would prefer wider angle, faster aperture lenses like that of the LX5 and probably the more compact design as well. But the P7000 is a fine camera that lots of enthusiasts will appreciate for its smart shooting design, interesting feature set, and worthy photo quality. I'm Lori Grunin, and this is the Nikon Coolpix P7000.